Have you ever drug out your holiday lights only to have half a string of lights not work at all? It's so annoying and it seems like they break all of the time. But it used to be way worse. You see, it used to be the case that if just a single light bulb on your entire string burned out, all of them would go out. Talk about annoying. Why was that? Well, it turns out that we used to wire those electrical light bulbs with something called a series circuit. And that has only one pathway through all of those light bulbs. And so if you break it at one point, none of them work. More modern strings of light use parallel circuits. And these circuits create multiple paths to every single light bulb. So if one goes out, the rest can still work, which is pretty sweet. All right, in this lesson, we're going to compare series and parallel circuits. Let's learn. Let's begin by reviewing our lesson objectives. First, we'll introduce parallel and series circuits, two different ways to wire up a circuit. Then we'll compare and contrast parallel and series circuits and see how they have different properties. And lastly, we'll determine resistance for parallel and series circuits. Let's take a look at our first circuit. Here, imagine putting your finger on the battery and tracing towards that red wire over the switch through the two light bulbs all the way back to the battery. Notice that there's just one path you can follow from the battery back to the battery. When that's true, we have a series circuit. Here's the same circuit with a circuit diagram. Once again, you can imagine putting your finger on this circuit and tracing it all the way from the battery back to the battery. In series circuits, current flows through one path. In series circuits, current flows through one path. Contrast that to this guy. Here we see that if I try to trace the whole circuit I have to kind of double back on myself. Here, there's two paths to each light bulb, and that makes this a parallel circuit. In parallel circuits, current flows through two or more paths. This is even more clear in the circuit diagram, which shows that if I want to trace the whole path, I have to double back on myself. So these are just two different ways to wire up my light bulbs, and they have very different properties. Let's start with the properties of series circuits. Here's the thing that's kind of bad news about the series circuits. If one light burns out, they all go out. So let's say that light bulb goes out. The other one's totally fine. But guess what? Just because the first light bulb went out, the second one won't light up either. And this is true not just if we have light bulbs, but anything in series. If one goes out, there's no longer a path to the next one. We call this one component failure. A classic example is our string of lights that are on our Christmas tree. If these are wired in series, then you get a headache where if one light bulb burns out, all of them go out. Contrast that to parallel circuits. In parallel circuits, let's say one of these goes out. Well, the other one actually is still okay. It lights up just fine. And that's because we have two pathways through our circuit. There's still one complete path through that working light bulb. All right, now let's move on to calculating resistance. Let's think about how the resistance changes when we have multiple elements in a circuit. It turns out for series circuits, resistance adds up. So we can calculate the resistance of our circuit in series just by adding up the resistance of the different components. So notice this says RS, that stands for the resistance of the series circuit, equals R1 plus R2 dot dot dot. That means you're going to add as many of those Rs as you have elements in your circuit. A practical example, here we have two 60 ohm light bulbs. So those light bulbs each have a resistance of 60 ohms. The resistance for our series circuit then is just 120 ohms. Pretty straightforward, you just add them up. It's not quite as straightforward for a parallel circuit. And that's because we have electricity being able to go through two paths. It turns out, unfortunately, this is your equation. The resistance of a parallel circuit is equal to one over 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2, and so forth. We want to be extra careful when we do this math in our calculator to not make a mistake. So let me go through this with you one step at a time. So let's say we want to find the resistance of a circuit with two 60 ohm resistors in parallel. We're going to use this equation. The resistance in parallel is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And now into R1 and R2, we're going to plug 60. Now don't try to simplify this all at once. You'll probably make a mistake if you do. So what I recommend is grab your calculator, even right now, pause the video, grab your calculator, type into your calculator, one over 60 
plus 1 over 60. That means your calculator is going to give you 0 0.033333. Actually, the threes go on forever. In any case, that's now on the denominator of our fraction. So the resistance of our parallel circuit is equal to 1 over 0 0.03333 forever. And remember, the way we got that number is we went back to this step, and we just, in our calculator, typed in 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60. And that gives us... 0 0.033333, and we plug that into the bottom there. Now, when we take this uh, fraction and we divide it in our calculator, we're going to do 1 divided by 0 0.0333, etc., and we'll get exactly 30 ohms. Okay, but this is actually kind of interesting because we have two light bulbs, each with a resistance of 60 ohms, but the resistance of our circuit is just 30 ohms. So resistance dropped with more resistors? And yeah, that's exactly true for a parallel circuit. Let's think about why. Here is our circuit. We have on the left a voltage source, and we have some current coming out of it. That IT stands for the total current. Well, here's the thing. Current can go through path one, it can go through path two, or it can go through path three because this is a parallel circuit. And so because there's all these different paths, the total resistance gets smaller, so more paths gives us less resistance. Let's summarize the differences between series circuits and parallel circuits. For series circuits, we know that there's just one path the current can take, but for parallel circuits, we have two or more paths. For series circuits, we've learned that if one component fails, all the components fail. Meanwhile, parallel circuits, if one component fails, the rest work just fine, so it's no problem. So parallel circuits are more reliable. Lastly, we've learned that resistance adds up for series circuits, so every element I had increases the resistance. Meanwhile, for parallel circuits, resistance drops because as I add paths, there is more different ways for that current to move through the circuit. All right, now it's your turn to try to identify this as a series or parallel circuit. What do you think? Well, it's series. Why? Because we can just trace that one path all the way through. What about this one? Well, yeah, here you can see, in fact, there's two paths, and so it's going to be a parallel circuit. All right, last thing we're going to do is practice calculating resistance. Here we learn that there's a series circuit that contains three resistors, each with a resistance of 25 ohms. What is the circuit resistance? Pause the video and see if you can calculate this. Here's the equation we're going to use. All right, well, this one is pretty straightforward. We just do 25 plus 25 plus 25, and the resistance of our series circuit is just 75 ohms. All right, on to the harder example. Here we're told that a parallel circuit contains three resistors. So same number of resistors, but now they're in parallel. What is the circuit resistance? This is the equation we're going to use this time. We have three 1 over Rs on the bottom there because there's three components in our circuit. So pause the video and see if you can calculate the resistance of this parallel circuit. Well, let's work through it one step at a time. Again, first we're just going to plug in 25 to each of our R terms down there on the bottom. And then on your calculator, I want you to type in 1 over 25 plus 1 over 25 plus 1 over 25. And you'll get 0 0.12. So we have 1 over 0 0.12. When we divide that in our calculator, we get 8.333, which repeats forever. So we run around to two sig figs because our 25 ohms has two sig figs, and we'll get a resistance of 8.3 ohms. Again, notice the resistance dropped when we added more resistors because this is a parallel circuit. Let's review what we've learned. First, we introduced parallel and series circuits. We saw that parallel circuits have multiple paths, whereas series circuits have just one path for the current. Then we compared and contrasted parallel and series circuits, where we saw that parallel circuits were more reliable. If something fails, the rest of the items keep working, whereas in a series circuit, if one thing fails, they all fail. And lastly, we determined resistance for parallel and series circuits. We saw that resistance increases for the elements I put in a series circuit, but decreases in the case of a parallel circuit. Hey, hey.